Sarah Steele is earning raves on Broadway in the searingly funny yet heartbreaking new play, The Humans. I'm here at Joe Allen to catch up with the down-to-earth young star. So we're here at Joe Allen, Sarah Steele, and this is kind of a clubby, cozy place. It's pretty much the opposite of The Humans. Sure, yeah. It's very homey and furnished. Right, so The Humans takes place in a Kind of, would you call it a creepy apartment? Spacious yet creepy? I would call creepy. it, at the moment of the play, a creepy apartment. Mm. I think it's going to get decorated and it's going to eventually look great. But I sort of have to believe that as the person who just moved into it. So this play takes place on Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and you are hosting your family. Have you ever hosted a family Thanksgiving? I haven't. I think it would be such a nightmare, especially to have, to have the whole family come in to New York from out of town with grandparents to like an apartment of people in their mid-twenties just seems so scary to me. <laughs> but no, I, I, I would go to great lengths to avoid that situation myself. You know, describing that scenario makes it sound like such a New York-centric play. Did you mm. ever have an apartment that you wouldn't necessarily want to have your parents come visit? Absolutely. Uh, I live, when I first graduated from college, uh, I lived with four roommates in just a terrible apartment in, in Brooklyn. Uh, we were just sort of all on top of each other and we all, I think we were worried about graduating so we were like, well we're all gonna live together and had no idea that that's actually a terrible idea. You really shouldn't move in with like five people <laughs> and a dog. Do you relate to this family? There are things, there are definitely similarities between this family and my family. The, the narrative that I am playing out with the mother in the play, I don't relate to and I had a hard time with at first because I think I just have a huge amount of respect and admiration for my own mother. And in the play, your mother, in the play, I think, played by Jane Howdy Shell. It's just a little, marvelous Jane, Jane Howdy Shell. Howdy Shell. It's, just a, it's just tense. It's tense, and I think she has a fear of growing up to be like her mother, whereas I sort of hope to grow up to be like my mother. So I had I had sort of a hard time getting a handle on that at first. That's very sweet. I hope your mother's watching this. <laughs> Hi, <She> Mom. <laughs> now, is it true that Stephen Karam wrote this play with you in mind? Yes. He told me when we were working uh, on something at Ars Nova, he told me that he was writing a thriller for me and Cassie Beck. And I was like, wow, I can't wait to like s read a thriller that you wrote, because that seemed very antithetical to his writing style to me. Mm -hmm. um, and then it turned out to be this, which is really a family play. It's funny that he thought of it There's as some a thrilling thriller. moments. Oh, of course, <laughs> but I, I had a very different picture in my head of me and Cassie kind of like, Slasher. Slasher, you know, villainous vampire women or something. So that must feel really amazing to have a playwright have you in mind. I think that the character really sounds like me, sort of the way that I talk, but she's a totally different person. Uh, so it's funny because I think he, we're close friends, and I think maybe he wanted to challenge me a little bit. How are you different from Bridget? I'm not confrontational the way that she is at all. Do you think of her as confrontational just with her family or just everywhere? I think everywhere. <laughs> I do, yeah. So she's a little edgier than you? Yeah, I think she's edgy. And I, th and, I, and I think she kind of just doesn't let people get away with anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's really not like me. But now that you're embodying that character, is it informing your life? <laughs> yes. Are you becoming edgier? Yes, it's funny. My boyfriend um, talked about that in the first few weeks that I was in rehearsal. I, I would come home and I would have an edgier energy to me, and he would just be like, you are a piece of work right now. I don't know if I can like, handle <laughs> you this whole time. OK, we have to talk about The Good Wife. OK. Because everybody loves you on The Good Wife. And now it's going off the air. I know. And you play Alan Cummings' daughter, because mm -hmm. you have to play a Tony Winner's daughter. <laughs> wherever you are. Um, do you, uh, what are you gonna miss about it? Gosh, I'm, I'm so lucky to have that job. What I'm really gonna miss about it is that they're, it, it, they're great writers, they write particularly for their actors, and they work around people's theater schedule because they are a t network television show that really respects actors. That's and shot that's New York City. Hard to find, yeah. yeah. Um, we all feel so lucky and so sad that it's. And would you say that that character is edgy also, or sort of? Uh, Marissa just doesn't give a crap. You know, it's more—it's more that kind of like she's just a super chill girl. 
What are some reactions you've had of people telling you about the play? Oh, it's it's you never know what you're going to get when you when you do this play and then you come up and you see people. I've had people who couldn't talk to me for a little while because they were just not in a place to speak to me. Um, I've had some people's parents come and and kind of resent having to be put through it hmm. because it's so close to home and I think it just hit them in a way that they weren't ready for. It's very way. real and yeah, it's, it's very, very it's, real. It's people struggling, each member of the family is struggling in a different way. Right. And of course I've had people love it, I've had people who can't stop crying. So you were in Stephen Karam's speech and debate. Mm -hmm. And the movie. Oh yeah, yeah. Tell me about that. It's so hilarious. I mean, it was a funny experience for me just because I was twenty. I turned twenty-seven while we were filming, playing seventeen, and both of the people who played my co-stars were actually eighteen and nineteen years old. So, and we shot it in Mississippi. So it felt like a time actually that I really reverted back to being about eighteen years old. And that was another situation where my boyfriend visited me and was like, "What's happening?" <laughs> What You're transforming before girlfriend. his eyes. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but gosh, we had a blast, and Stephen came down, and we got to sort of be in Mississippi together, which was hilarious. So Bridget is a composer in this. What kind of music do you think she writes? Uh, I, I think she writes kind of classical, like Nico Muley, uh, sort of uh, unusual, experimental kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and then also has like a career where she sings and Does plays she have a guitar. band? Does she have a band? I, name? I think she works with musicians. Uh, but no, I don't think she has a band. Okay, this brings me to something I read about you. Okay. That you were into hip hop dancing oh, when you were no. young. <laughs> I mean I read that I had to bring it up. That's very important. Who got that out of me? <laughs> Um, yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that because I just went, I just started going back to class. I, I promise you I'm not following you around. <laughs> I just went back to class last I'm, week. I'm not saying I can picture this because I can't, but... That's okay. How has this come up in your life? I, it's actually how I started, oddly enough. Tell me everything. In, <laughs> I was in a troupe, actually with Gideon Glick, so you can bring this up with him the next time you see him. I will. Um, I was in a troupe in Philadelphia that did hip hop musicals um, in in like Hamilton public schools. But before. no, it was yeah, basically like we would um, we would sort of go into schools and ask them what are some stories that you'd want to be told, and they like would say like improv hip hop. No, it, no, we it, no, we would work for months on the oh, show. Okay. We would just take a premise from them, like mm -hmm. I live in a shelter and I don't want anyone to know, mm -hmm. and then we would make a play about a girl who lives in a shelter and doesn't want anyone to find out. Um, but it would but it would be a hip hop musical, and Gideon and I were like some of the only white kids, and we would dance around. And you must be good at it. I'm not going to ask you to I give us any moves. I was better then than I am now. That's what I'll say. <laughs> Thank you for coming to Joe Allen with me. Oh, of course. Let's come back here another time. Great. Sounds or, great. And we can bust a move outside. It'll be fun. <laughs> anyway, great. thank you very much.